What's up, Algebra 2? If you've made it to this video, it means you're ready to go over your answer for number three, <laughs> numero tres. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so number three says that the function g is a translation of the parent function f, one unit to the left and three units up. What is the equation of g? Okay, oh, and then it wants us to write the equation in vertex form and in the form of f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And if you needed a reminder, this is in standard form. So it want, they want us to write the equation in vertex form and in standard form. Okay, so right away, there's a bunch of information to unpack here. So they say that the function g is a translation, and they tell us that it's a translation from the parent function. So let's take a pause right there for a moment. So the parent function of a parabola has the equation, and we're going to call this f of x because they told us that the parent function here is going to be called f. So f of x equals x squared. Okay. And we can check from the graph too and our equation that the vertex of our parent function is at 0, 0. And it's got a stretch of 1. So that a value is going to be 1. Okay, so then the next thing that we have to unpack is that G is translated one unit to the left and three units up from the vertex zero, zero. So if I'm moving from zero, zero to one unit to the left and three units up, that means my vertex of G is going to be at negative one comma three because we're going one to the left and three up. And if I look at the picture that they give me, I can also see the vertex here. So that vertex matches up with our graph. It's at negative one comma three. Okay, now we can go ahead and plug our vertex into the vertex form structure of our quadratic. So here's our structure. Okay, so I've got y equals a x minus h squared plus k. So what I'm going to do is plug in negative one in for h, and I'm going to plug three in for k. And it doesn't tell us that the g function is stretched um, from our parent function, so we're going to use that same stretch. So I also know my a. So I've got y equals one x minus, and that x value of that vertex is negative one squared, plus three. So I've gone ahead and substituted in those values and now I want to simplify. So I've got a, I've got two negatives right here. And so what that means is I can rewrite it as x plus one squared plus three. I don't have to bring down that one for the stretch here because I know that that's there. I've got one of those things, x plus one squared, right? So I'm just not gonna go ahead and write that. So here is my simplified vertex form of G, okay? And if I'm looking at my vertex form, it makes sense with the things that we've learned about transformations, right? If I've got a plus, inside of here, that means I'm moving to the left. And if I've got a plus on the outside of my parentheses, then that means that I'm moving up. Okay, so now we're gonna use this vertex form to help me write it in standard form. So I've got y equals x plus one squared plus three. Okay, so now remember we want to expand this x plus one because I've got an exponent of two there. So that looks like y equals x plus one times itself and bring down that three. Okay, you can set up your box if you'd like to and if you'd like, if you'd need that extra practice, here's how you would set that up. You get x and you write plus one, x and then plus one. Fill in those other boxes add and combine any like terms. So I get x squared plus 2x plus 1. And we're going to substitute this with this. So I've got y equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. And we need to bring down this plus 3. 
okay? From there, we can simplify more. So I've got y equals x squared plus 2x, and then 1 plus 3 is plus 4, and there's my standard form, right? Now, if you guys remember, standard form gives me the y-intercept, and the y-intercept is 4, and if I look at my blue graph, here it is. There's my y-intercept of 0, 4. All right, let's go ahead and try example number four.